What's up guys? Today's video is going to be on the topic of is Jesus the only way to heaven? In short, if you're not going to stick around for the rest of the video, I'll get right to the point. The answer is yes. If you are going to stick around, grab your Bibles as we're going to be looking at some scriptures today to find out why. You see, there's a common saying that uh, many people live by and that spread around the world and that is that all roads lead to heaven. Now, is this true or is it false? Let's start with our Bibles today in uh, Proverbs chapter 14. We're going to look at verse 12. The Word of God reads, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So we can see here that there are ways that seem right to man, but they lead to death. You know, we can, if we didn't have the Word of God, we could conclude that there are multiple ways to heaven or nirvana or enlightenment whatever you want to title it as um, you know for example we could look at Buddhism Mormonism we could look at Catholicism uh, Calvinism Arminianism any of the any of the world religions and faith out there aside from Christianity and we could conclude that they are correct if we didn't have the Word of God but what's what it all boils down to is that everything aside from Jesus and Jesus alone can be lumped into the category of salvation by works. But the end thereof is the ways of death. Uh, so what's the difference between all of these men, all of these teachings, uh, from these different world religions and faiths that are out there? For example, you know, we have very many, we have very popular people, for example, Buddha, Muhammad, uh, Joseph Smith, John Calvin, Jacob Arminius, uh, all the preceding popes of the Catholic, Roman Catholic faith. What is the one thing that they all have in common, though? They are still in their graves. But Jesus, the difference between Jesus is he is risen, amen? He is alive. He is ascended on high, sitting at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, so we can see here that there are ways that seem right to a man, but they're not right. What is the right way? If you would, grab your Bibles and turn to Matthew. Matthew chapter, let's look at 7. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13 and 14. Word of God reads, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So we can see here there's two different types of destinations, two different paths. There's the broad way and the narrow way. One way leads to destruction, and many there be that find it. And there is a narrow way which leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. Why is it narrow and why is there few? Because people reject the fact that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And they add works to the gospel. Many people believe that they can earn their way to heaven. Many people believe that, you know, Jesus is how we get to heaven, but I've got to do my part. I've got to do good works. I've got to be water baptized I have to fill in the blank X Y and Z but we can see here the Bible tells us that there is only one door you can enter through to get to heaven so if you would turn to John chapter 10 in John chapter 10 let's look at verses 9 and 10 the Word of God reads I am the door. Who's the door? Jesus. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The little one number ten says, The thief cometh not to the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. You see, the one thing the devil wants is to steal, kill, and destroy. If he can do anything to uh, just lead you off of the narrow way, then he wins. You see, 
the devil hates God, that he hates the fact that we can have salvation and that it is simple because Jesus paid it all. He will do anything he can to make you doubt the word of God and doubt the fact that it is as simple as Jesus has made it. Um, if you would, let's look at Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Acts chapter 4 verse 12, we can see that there is only one name that can save the word of God reads, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And what is that name? Jesus. Jesus Christ saves. And he is the only name that can save. He is the only person that can save. Now, let's turn back to John. Let's look at John chapter 14. We'll spend a little more time here. John chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So what can we see here? We can see here that there is not multiple ways. Jesus isn't just a way to heaven. He's not just a truth or the life. He's, he's saying this singularly. He is excluding all other ways, all other truths that lead to life. Jesus is saying, while this verse is very exclusive, it is the most inclusive because Jesus, as it says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, again, that is the whole world, you are a whosoever, I am a whosoever, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. And so we see here, let's look at these three, three statements here, these three singular statements. Jesus says, I am the way. The way means that this excludes religion, traditions of men. It excludes me and it excludes you and all of our efforts to save ourselves. Just like it says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the what gift of God, not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. So we can see there that salvation is a gift from God, and it's through faith in his Son, in Jesus Christ. It's not of works. It is not of anything that you could do to get yourself there. You cannot earn salvation. Salvation is a gift of God, not a reward we earn. Now the next statement, Jesus says, I am the truth. This means that he is true and anything that contradicts and goes against Jesus is false. Jesus and Jesus alone is the savior and the only way to salvation. So we go on to proceed to Jesus saying, I am the life. Now, why does he say he's the life? The Bible tells us that Anyone who doesn't have Jesus Christ as their Savior is spiritually dead. You need to be born again. You need to be regenerated. You need to be made spiritually alive. Um, and that is the only way to salvation, is to be born again. And that is through Jesus. If you would, turn your Bibles to 1 John. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, and let's look at verses 9 through 13. We see here the word of God reads, If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. So what is this record? The very next verse goes on to say, And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in who? His Son, Jesus Christ. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may what? Ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. The Bible tells us that when we have the Son, we have life. We have been given eternal life, and that we can what? 
we can know. Not that we can hope, not that we can think, not that we can one day earn it. No, that we can know right now that we have eternal life, present tense. Salvation is a moment, not a process. So we can see back here in John 14, 6, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we can see here that no man comes to Jesus, no man comes to the Father but by who? Jesus. Um, this means Jesus is the only way and there is no other way. Everyone who goes to heaven goes the same way and it's through Jesus Christ alone. So with this statement right here, this throws out multiple ways to heaven. It throws out religion. It throws out good works. It throws out anything of our own to receive salvation. You see, salvation doesn't come by men. It doesn't come by a religion. It doesn't come by the Pope. It doesn't come by Mormon prophets. It doesn't come by anybody. It doesn't come by your good works. It doesn't come by you being baptized, uh, by you having good fruits, by you whatever you want to fill in the blank the only way to heaven is through jesus christ alone and so how how do we receive that how does that play out well the bible tells us in first corinthians 15 verses 1 and through 4 specifically in 3 and 4 the bible tells us the gospel the gospel is that how that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures you see, salvation is simple. The reason that many are on the broad road to destruction and that there are few there be that go into the straight gate in the narrow way is because it's unpopular, because people don't like the fact that Jesus paid it all, that it, salvation is simple. They don't like the simplicity in Christ. You see, Jesus Christ stepped down. God, the Son of God, God the Son, eternally eternally existent forever from time past see god stepped down into his creation born of a virgin humbled himself and took upon flesh and he lived a perfect and sinless life that you and i could never live and he willingly went to the cross as the perfect spotless unblemished lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world he shed his perfect blood on that cross for me, for you, for the sins of all the world, nailing the sins to the cross. He was buried and he rose again the third day for our remission of sins and justification. You see, if you are believing in anything other than that, if you are believing in your religion, in your pro supposed prophet, if you are believing in your good works and your baptism, the fact that you attend a church, that you're a part of a specific religion, you will spend eternity separated from God. You will spend eternity in a place called hell, a very real place. And I don't want you to end up there. I want to see you and everyone else in heaven with me. And why do I know I'm going to heaven? Because the word of God says so. Because Jesus died for my sins and he was buried and rose again. And I place my faith in him and him alone. It is Jesus who saves, not you, not your religion, not your works. I pray today that you would receive Christ as your Savior. It is that simple. The moment that you trust in the gospel, as it says in Ephesians 1.13, God seals you with his Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. God is coming back for his bride soon, people. And I want you to be caught up in the clouds with me. I want you to be raptured because the tribulation that's coming is the scariest thing in the world. And I don't want anybody to have to go through it. I don't want my friends. I don't want my family. I don't want you as a stranger listening to this to have to go through the tribulation period. You can know where you're going when you die. All you have to do is believe and trust in Jesus Christ and the gospel believe that he died for you for your sins was buried and rose again and you are promised everlasting life you are sealed with the spirit there is nothing no man and no one and not even yourself that can separate you that can pluck you from the hand of god or the son there's nothing that can break the seal of the holy spirit god tells us that you can know that you're going to heaven god tells us that there's nothing that can separate you from the love of god once you are born again the Bible tells us that there is therefore now no condemnation to any of those that are in Christ Jesus. 
So I pray today that today would be the day of your salvation. If God has placed somebody on your heart that, uh, want, that you want to share this video with, I pray that you do, that it can be a blessing to somebody. Um, if not, I'd pray that you would just like, subscribe, and comment. Do anything we can to get the one true gospel of grace out there to the lost and dying world. I don't do this channel to receive praise of man and attention and glory. I don't plan on being a huge mega YouTuber. I just want people to know the one true gospel of grace. I want people to know my Savior, Jesus Christ. I want them to know where they're going when they die. So I hope this video has been a blessing. Um, like I said, share with anybody that God puts on your heart. And if you are listening to this and you are not saved, let today be the day of your salvation. We'll catch you on the next one. God bless.